I think as humans we're a little bit obsessed with triangles. I think we've we hold some mystic kind of intrigue around the triangle concept. You can see we hold them in high regard. We build massive monuments to them. The pyramids are an example of that. We subscribe our secret societies. They have triangles in their symbols and imagery. And our dangerous kind of safety issues are always described by triangles, Bermuda Triangle. Um, something's not quite right here. And, and we need to do something about this triangle situation. I have a reputation. They feel your methods, your theories are spooky. So are you searching for evidence and maybe new ways or fresh ways of thinking about safety concepts? Are you maybe a little bit skeptical about the val validity or credibility of the accident triangle? Are you interested in the practice of safety? If you answered yes, you're in the right place. So let's kick it off with the domino theory of accidents. Roughly around the 1920s, 1930s, a fellow called Herbert Heinrich rejected this idea of accident proneness, that people are predisposed to being involved in incidents because of personal qualities, and said, well, that's just not practical. We can't do anything about someone's personality or their makeup. We're better off focusing on the stuff that we can actually influence. So Heinrich really reinvigorated and, and, and did a lot of good for safety because he basically said, Accidents can be prevented. We can do something about this. He challenged that notion that we're resigned to our fate and we just leave it in the hands of, of chance to, to see what happens. So Heinrich's contribution was around the domino theory, this idea that there's sort of a sequential and linear progression of cause and effect, um, that sort of the, the, the factors, the, con the, the causal factors all line up and one uh, set off at the end of that, that sequence, maybe that could be personality, maybe it could be something quite distal in the organisation or in the environment. That then flows through linearly and ultimately triggers um, some sort of injury event at the end of that chain. So the idea here is that that accident, accident sequence can be interrupted or disrupted just by pulling out the right domino. If we could only find the right lever to pull, um, we could stop accidents from happening and that's a pretty noble, noble um, contribution. Where Heinrich's model got a little bit misrepresented was perhaps the focus on unsafe acts. He, he sort of mentioned that, but it was really taken up by the safety profession that human behavior is the last domino in the sequence and where we should focus all of our energy and effort to, and attention. So the good old accident triangle, it's still out there. We can do a quick Google search and just see how prolific this particular concept is across the safety industry. Three key ideas with the accident triangle. So incidents are the results of linear patterns of causality, cause effect, uh, something happens as a result. Uh, there's a fixed ratio between safety events and the numbers kind of differ depending upon the model you're looking at. And here's one representation here. And ultimately worker acts are responsible for maybe 90% of accidents. And we see that in a lot of different materials to even today that this, this statistic, this mythical statistic of worker error um, being responsible for most accidents um, still gets perpetuated to this day. So although it was touted or, or promoted as scientific, if you dig deeper, uh, there's some questionable things happening with Heinrich's research. And indeed, no one's actually seen the original data set to verify that these ratios actually exist. A little bit later, Frank Bird attempted to replicate the triangle. He, he sort of did and, and changed the ratio. I think he had 600 incidents, so a little bit more of a larger ratio there. Um, but importantly, he added two points which sort of took thinking in a positive direction. So Frank said, well, management factors, the, the organization, the leadership, the things that are a little bit distal to the worker are just as important to look at. Okay? So that was pretty revolutionary for the time. And rather than the individual, we need to focus on the organization and those sort of uh, distal or latent conditions in, in the organization. So a little bit about the domino model in detail. Um, it really came about because at the time, the various revolutions, scientific re revolution, industrial revolution, there was a big focus on, well, the world's malleable, the, the world's controllable. Humans have the capacity to really uh, take ownership over their, over their world and their environment. So it was really this point that, well, you know, we, we, we sort of had this mechanicalistic relationship between cause and effect and we can intervene in, the, in, that, in that chain of events. So, 
I guess one of the, the important points about the, the domino model, and again, something that's really helped us a lot to make massive gains, is the introduction of this notion of hierarchy of control. So although unsafe acts and conditions were probably the proximal um, kind of uh, factor involved in incidents, people in you know, safety professionals started to say, well, maybe the best way to manage that is through engineering control. So things that are in place um, sort of physically that, that separate the worker, that create a distance between the hazard or the risk and, and the person, that, that stop that energy propagating is more effective than just relying on procedures, for example. And we got a lot of benefit out of that. The broken windows hypothesis is this is sort of, I guess, a lot of similarities to what we call um, criminality behaviour. So the, the idea with broken windows is that in a suburb, if you don't fix up minor crimes, if you if you've broken windows and graffiti are left to, to fester, that will encourage more criminality and, and sort of higher frequency, higher severity kinds of events from happening, shootings, fatalities, murders, those types of things. And that was applied, I guess that type of thinking was applied to Heinrich's model, that if we take care of the low-hanging fruit, if we clean up all those unsafe acts and conditions, we'll prevent fatalities from happening. The problem though is that we took that philosophy a little bit too hard, and so unsafe acts really were equated with maybe criminal, criminal acts or you know, dis things that needed discipline or punishment in order to, to, um, to be rectified. So this is really where that myth of the 90% of, the of accidents caused by humans really became embedded. So again, the, the, we can see Heinrich's, the progression of Heinrich's ideas influenced seminal people like James Reason, the, one of the most influential, um, highly respected scholars, got a lot of time for, for James. Um, but you can see here where Heinrich's original ideas started to be applied and just expanded and increased. So we've got you know, the layers of the, of the Swiss cheese, the different kinds of aspects that we focus on that are more distal from the, from the actual incident. Um, but what we see is that really there's no type of evidence that supports these models. They're nice heuristics, they're nice models, they're nice frameworks, but there's no real data to support the fact that, that these things exist. Doesn't mean we shouldn't focus on maybe some of these more distal factors and latent failures across the organisation. What it does mean though is we need more complicated, more um, uh, models that more accurately reflect the reality of organisations. So what do we do? Well, unsafe acts, human errors, mistakes are just our starting point. That's, our, that's, our, that's the way where we start our investigation and start to trace back and, and, and figure out what contributed to that unsafe act. We don't focus on the, the error as, as the proximal cause. We need to get inside the tunnel with the worker, as Sid Decker says. We need to understand what made sense to him or her at the time, because it did. You know, we need to challenge that hindsight bias where they should have known better. Why did they do that? That was a stupid thing to do. That's not, the, not a, a helpful way um, to understand and learn and improve safety. Ultimately, behaviour is important. Behaviour results in positive capacities, adaption, flexibility. Humans are integral and important for the, for the safety of systems but it's not the panacea. There's a lot of different other aspects we need to focus on to get to our uh, goal of a safe and, um, and productive organisation. That's all from me today. Um, hope you've enjoyed it and taken away one or two things. Um, bye for now.